Hey everybody, welcome back to part 3. Part 1 went really well, I think. 44 views in, what, 2 days? That's pretty good for this channel. And I have part 2 sitting here where we make the number buttons. And in this episode we're going to talk about um, some more code behind. We're going to look at the switch statement and how to print some stuff out to the screen. Like, depending on the button that you press, right? So if I press 1, I want to see 1 come up and, and so on and so forth. So, let's hop into it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll open up our solution, calculator solution, and it should only take a second. Um, if you haven't watched the first two parts, I recommend you do so, so you know where exactly we are, and follow along. This is a good project, even if it's not like anything huge, it's a good starter project, and maybe to put in your portfolio if you're just starting out. Anyway, here we go. We got all the numbers, and we have a part of our grid, if you remember, at the very top, uh, right here where we're going to have the output. And right now I don't have anything um, to put the output in. So actually I'm going to add a text block. Okay, and that's gonna hold text. And we're gonna put it through the span of these four rows. So let's do grid dot, or not rows, columns, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. So grid dot row is going to be zero as it is. Uh, by default, but we'll just explicitly say it. And then grid.column is going to start at column zero. Okay, and then you can do something else. You can do grid.column span. What that says is, okay, if there's consecutive columns, how many columns is this going to take up? And this is going to take up four total. So we're going to put four there. And you can kind of see, let me go back to three, so you can see the difference. You can see these little blocks, hopefully you can see them, these little boxes right here, stop right, on the third end of the third column. If I change that to four, it now goes all the way. So we'll hit Control S to use our extension to automatically style that nice and pretty. And now I need to give it some kind of name. So if we do X name, uh, let's call this like output um, text block. That looks good to me. And then something else I like to do before I start messing with it in the code behind is I'd like to put some like sample text so we can put a text attribute and just type in random stuff that way we can see it we can say oh, okay well this isn't really how we want our calculator to look because if you remember the actual calculator uh, the numbers start all the way over here and the num uh, well these are these are letters but they're going to be numbers when we hit buttons they're pretty small so that's why I like to do that I like to visualize before I start messing with it with the code behind. So what I can do is I can change the font size, first of all. And this is where you can play around with um, numbers to see what works. I feel like 40 is going to be good. And then what we can do is text alignment, I think is what we want. And we want it to be right. So it's actually going to be over here. And for some reason that F is being cut off. So what I want to do, and maybe it has something to do with how big these columns actually are. So maybe we want to change the last one. No, that didn't help much at all. Or did it? Let's see. Let's change that to 75. Yeah, that did. Okay, what about 70? So maybe our math was a little bit off when we made these columns. So let's actually change all of these. Let's change these like 78 each. And then, you know, this is something that you just end up playing around with. And it's really hard to get it the first time. And look, that looks so much better, right? We got the uh, we got the text actually in the text block. And it is a little bit high, though. So what I can do is I can actually do a vertical alignment. And let's put it at the bottom. That way it's right here. Uh, vertical alignment allows you to align it vertically, and then there's a horizontal alignment as well. Um, we didn't use the horizontal alignment because we used the text alignment. What else do we want to do? It looks like it looks like that's okay. Maybe I can put a little maybe I can put a little margin on the bottom. And if you remember, let's just actually put it in all directions like that. How's that look? And it looks like we can actually change the font size a little bit. Maybe 50. What's that look like? Okay. I think that looks okay. What do you guys think? This is something, you know, if you're following along, you can obviously 
play around with all of these different values. You can change the font. If you wanted to, you can add it to be bold. Um, you can change the font family if you wanted a different you know, font instead of the default one. But that's okay with me. I'm just going to remove the text now. I'm going to leave it blank. And I think we're just going to leave it at that. So now on the code behind, what I want to do is I want to take this name that we get. If you remember, this is the name of the button that we click. Now we can do something called a switch statement. Let me try to find that online. Okay, so real quick, this is a switch statement. Uh, it goes basically like this. You have switch, and then whatever you're basing that switch statement off of is what you pass into the parentheses. And then the rest of it goes inside these curly braces. And then you have cases. And each case goes with what you think or what you're going to do if this is that value. So for instance, if case switch is equal to 1, it's going to write out this. And then we're going to break because we're not going to worry about the rest. We're just going to end it there. Uh, and then case, if it was equal to 2, case switch, it would get to the 2. It would say, yeah, it equals 2. It would do whatever's in that, that block, I guess, if you will. And then at the end, you have to put the break. And then at the end, of everything, let's say it, it doesn't meet any of the case requirements, um, you can actually put a default case. And then this is like the catch-all. It's like the else in an if-else statement. right? If it doesn't meet the if or the else if or the else if or how many other uh, else ifs there are, um, it'll catch that at the very end. So we're going to do something like that. So we're going to do switch and we're going to switch it on the name. right? And you'll see why I'm doing that here in a second. So what if the name, and i got to remember how we ended up. Yeah, so we did the number and the BTN. So if I did 1 BTN, let's just try this just to test. Message box, you clicked 1. Oh, and these should be double quotes, not single. I didn't mean to, mean to do that. Message, message box dot show, not message box. There we go. So just to test it out, let's run this and see if it even works. You clicked one. So we can see it works. So what I'm going to do is instead of message box dot show, okay, I am at the very top of this class. I'm going to make a string and I'm going to call it output. And right now it's just going to be this. Okay, it's going to be an empty string. And what I think I'm going to do is when one is pressed, we're going to add to output that number in a string format and then make the output text block that value. Okay, I think this will work. So we'll append it into this. So the very first one's going to append it to an empty string, so it's just going to be that. So output's going to equal. Output is going to be appended or plus equal, which means just add this to whatever exists. Um, and then we're going to do double dot parse. No, we don't want to do double dot parse, do we? We just want to give it a 1. OK, so output plus equals 1 in the case of a string. And then we can do uh, output text block um, dot text, so the text attribute of that text block and the GUI is going to equal output. I think this will work. Let's go ahead and just try it out. Let's try pressing one. Let's see if it shows. Check that out. Just like a calculator would, right? So if we bring over calculator. Except you don't get the commas, but that's okay for now. Okay. I think that works. So what we can do is we can do this kind of thing, but for each number button. So instead of one button, we do two. And this is going to be 
another case where why is this purple? Oh, because the application is running. Okay, we'll end that. Um, this will be another case where I'm just going to work ahead and fill all these in. If you're following along, you can do so. And then we'll come back and reconvene once I have all of these made. But basically, you just change the case to the next button name and then change the output corresponding to the name of the button. And I'll see you back when we get this. Okay, guys, I'm back. I filled out all of our different cases. Hopefully, if you're following along, you did the same. I don't think I messed up anything. We'll soon see. I'll start this and I'll just click every single button just to make sure that it gets appended. Ah, uh, did that work? Or did I just click the wrong button? No, I think I clicked the wrong one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the problem that we're going to run into is it's actually going to go off the screen like this. Um, and we don't have a clear button yet, so I can't test the last ones. Yeah, they look like they work. But I think that's all the functionality I want to work on in this video. Um, we'll go ahead and work with different operators like plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And we'll go ahead and add those in the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoy this series yet again, and I'll see you in the next one.